everybody welcome back to the channel we're just gonna have a little discussion about packing for air travel on airlines for photography and videography now I'll cut to the chase if you have a small camera entry camera or really any camera and you only plan on taking one or two lenses just uh, put it in your carry-on and uh, take it on the plane with you don't worry about anything else you just can't pack uh, batteries into your checked luggage so like if your camera runs off a battery, like this GoPro battery, you cannot put this in your checked luggage. It has to be in your carry-on or on your person. It has to go through security. Now depending on what airline you travel with, we usually go with Southwest, uh, you're allowed one personal item and one carry-on item. So for me, I use the Retrospective V20. It worked pretty good. Got a little slot in the back here. It, uh, you know, slots on top of your uh, rolling luggage. Makes it nice and easy to carry through the airport without using your shoulder because it gets kind of heavy. Now, since on Southwest you can use basically two bags to pack your stuff, if I wanted to, I could have used that bag in my uh, 36 liter backlight. But uh, traveling with a small child and family didn't really have the space or time for that. So I checked most of my heavy equipment and took my fragile battery powered equipment with me on the, on, the, on the plane itself and the rest of it was all checked in my luggage. So we're going to go through what I did here and uh, you know what I checked, what I didn't and make sure you go on your carrier's website and go through the TSA's website to see what you can and cannot take on, the size limitations. For instance, I was kind of worried about taking my NPF batteries on the plane for the Shinobi monitor because these are 65 watt hour batteries. You are limited, can't remember if it was TSA, I think it was TSA, you're limited to 100 watt hours capacity on removable batteries. Now, by the time you see this video, uh, some of the rules and regulations might change, so make sure you go on there and check what the what what's what. But this is the basics of it. So anything over under 100 watt hours is perfectly fine for a carry-on. And people have asked me, what about laptops? What about phones and everything else? As far as I know, uh, pretty much any phone should be under 100 watt hours. So that'd be a huge phone. But laptops, I didn't have any problems. I have a MacBook Air M1 under all this stuff right here. That took through security, and whenever you go through security at the TSA point in the United States, you have to usually, depending on the airport, nine times out of ten you do, have to take your laptop out of the bag, put a separate container, and put it through the x-ray machine separate from your actual carry-on items. So like all my lenses and camera and everything were in the bag, and then I had to take the laptop out and put that through separately. Really not a big deal. They're going to tell you when you get there, but it's just something to, to think about when you're standing in line waiting to get your turn to go through. And as mentioned earlier, anything with replaceable batteries, lithium-ion batteries, other types of batteries, like the NPFs, the GoPro batteries, the batteries in the Z9 that I'm recording on, anything like that, you uh, in power banks, like you charge your phone or whatever off a power bank, those have to be carry-on. You cannot check those in. And uh, pretty much my rule of thumb besides that is if you have like, you know, regular AA, AAA batteries, uh, bring those on with you. Don't check those because TSA will see that through the security and they can and will open your bag and search it. But when they do search it, they'll leave a little, little note in your bag saying this was searched by so-and-so, have a little name on there and everything. And whenever it comes to having, uh, like if you're wearing a backpack, if you're taking a backpack, like this thing. I would highly recommend you get these TSA locks. Not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera. Get these TSA locks. It has a universal TSA lock combo in the bottom of it. Not really a combo, but it just tells them a number. They have all the keys to open these TSA approved locks. So that if you use a zip tie to zip tie your bag or your uh, checked luggage so it doesn't open on the belt during uh, inspection and everything. If they need to inspect your bag and they cut the zip tie, they're not going to put another zip tie on there. So just put a TSA lock on there. They'll unlock it, check your bag, go through it, whatever they need to put everything back in the bag. Then they'll just put this back on. I've never had any problems with that. They do get beat up over time. They're not super expensive. I think I got like four of these for like 25 bucks. 
I'll put a link in the description for Amazon if you're interested in using TSA locks, but I highly recommend that instead of using zip ties. And I would even put these on, uh, like if you're carrying a Pelican case through uh, the airport as your carry-on, I would definitely put a TSA lock on the Pelican case at least too. So that way, you know, someone can't just walk up, take something out of it real quick and walk away. Now keep in mind, these, uh, these TSA locks are not going to keep a uh, determined thief out of your, your bags or boxes or pelican cases or Apache cases or whatnot. Now, uh, they're, they're very thin, they're kind of cheap. I'm sure they're easy to pick, but it just makes it easier for TSA and it keeps your stuff from opening up on the belt and kind of from ruining your clothes. And ever, you know, your luggage is coming down the slide and you're like looking for your luggage and everyone's luggage does look the same. Uh, you can sometimes identify your bag pretty quickly by just looking for the specific lock that's on your bag too. That makes it a little bit easier for that too. Okay, so enough of the locks. Let's talk about packing all this junk up. Now, this microphone, the Deity V-Mic, it, uh, it doesn't have a replaceable battery. It's chargeable inside. So technically, you can put this in your checked luggage if you want. I did not on the way there, but I did on the way back just because I had other stuff. Now you can do whatever you want with it. It's really up to you. You could just put this part in your uh, carry-on and put your dead cat in the uh, check bag if you want to since it takes up a lot of space. Now the uh, tripod that I'm using, my Gitzo, the camera's sitting on right now, it did go in my checked luggage. It only folds up like, you know, yay big, but I really didn't feel like carrying that through the airport. And then want someone to like think it was a weapon and have to deal with TSA, like it's just, it's not worth it. So I just uh, rolled it up in some clothes and I put it in my uh, checked luggage. I also did that with my 504X fluid head. This was in checked luggage. My lens support rail system, that was also in checked luggage. My uh, headphones, checked luggage. The less stuff you have to carry on your person, the easier life is going to be. Now, my camera strap, checked luggage, and pretty much everything else on the table here uh, went in my carry-on, in my um, retrospective bag here. Now, if you want a deeper dive into this bag, I do have a review on it earlier in the YouTube channel history. I'll put a link above a little, little pop-up for that. And also there'll be a pop-up for the uh, 36 liter backlight bag too. I did a review on that a couple years ago. So really, not much in here. It's pretty much empty. A lot more fitness than you think. So on the back side, you have a very small zippered pocket. I put my uh, Wacom drawing tablet in there for editing. Don't forget your USB. You'll be very sore about that. Then I also put my uh, USB-C charging cable. It is, what, what do they call this now? The IQ3 version, so it has high power charging. So I can charge the Z9 with this, my Samsung phone, and my MacBook Air, since everything is a uh, USB-C now. So that goes in the back here too. And we'll just zipper that closed. Good to go on that. Then for the rest of the stuff in the front, one side is for my 150 to 600 with the uh, FTZ adapter on there. Then we have my 24 to 70 f4s lens that goes on the other side. Now this lens, how I did it, is I set it down like this so that the um, lens mount was on top. And then I can't really show you because I'm using the camera right now. But the camera is uh, has the 40 f2 lens, the Z lens, and then. With that on there and the lens cap on, the camera fits vertically right in the top, so it like fits in there perfectly snug on top of that lens, and it comes right level to the top of the divider, so it's like a perfect fit. It's match made in heaven. So then for the front pocket, we have another little zippered area. I just put all my filters in there. Like this is a, uh, what is this? This is a UV filter. This is in case I need it for the beach. Don't want any sand uh, smacking up against the front element of lenses my variable ND filter, then my super mega huger 95 millimeter 18 stop filter, ND filter. We'll put that in the front because uh, not much space in there in this front zippered pocket. And then we'll put all of my adapter rings 
in the front pocket here with the zipper with the other filters I just mentioned. We'll just close that up. And then really all the other stuff just goes in the front pocket here, all the random junk like USB-C to C. That is going to be for my uh, external hard drive. It's crucial hard drive. It's a uh, one terabyte or two terabytes. I don't really remember, it's all worn off. Card reader, XQD SD card reader. Then we have the GoPro batteries, NPF batteries, any kind of adapters or clips or screws for the GoPro, the uh, Arca plate for my Gitzo, two lens cloths, never have enough lens cloths, put those in there with the camera itself. Then we have my Thunderbolt to USB adapter, pretty useful, everyone needs one of those it seems for some reason. GoPro goes in there. Another adapter in case I wanted to put the uh, GoPro on the Gitzo. GoPro cage. The uh, super cheap foam dead cat looking microphone cover thing that I got. Actually works pretty good. Pretty impressed with that to be honest. For like three bucks that it costs, five bucks. Then we have the uh, a charger for the um, NPF batteries and also USB-C chargeable, so super cool on that. Everything's USB-C now. So grateful for that. I'm so grateful that everything's USB-C. Then we have uh, AAA batteries, still in original packaging. This is from my uh, Zoom F2 field recorder. You can never forget your, uh, your tape for your microphone, for your chest mics, lav mics. Then we have my batteries in my... Uh, mouse for the laptop then the laptop itself macbook uh, m1 throw that in here it's getting a little hefty but it's okay and then there's a little velcro piece holds that front part on so nothing accidentally spills out and then we have my microphone now how i did this originally is I uh, just pretty much placed the microphone right here, kind of tucked it in there a little bit. And then on top, there's another little flap that you can zip close so no prying eyes can see what you have in your bag. They can't see your camera, can't see your lenses, your microphone, any of that stuff. And then the top part just has these Velcro bits that just go right onto the front. And now you're ready to go. Packed and ready for the airport. So yeah, uh, the number one thing you gotta do whenever you're packing all this stuff to go for a flight is check TSA, check the TSA version of whatever country you're going to, see what their requirements are. That's the number one thing. Number two thing is check to see what the uh, requirements are for whatever you're flying on. So like if you're going from the United States to London or US to you know, Australia and whatever countries you're stopping in between, you're gonna have to probably go through security a couple times. Look ahead, see what the requirements are, know what they are. So that if anybody has any questions, you're uh, much easier for you to not have any hassle and uh, have a comfortable trip. Because I'll be honest, TSA, standing in line, people constantly being asked the same questions all day long. The TSA people are uh, probably getting quite annoyed and you would think after 50 years of air travel that they wouldn't have to say the same thing over and over. But it seems that they do anyways. So until next time, I wish you the best of luck with TSA and traveling. And uh, one bonus tip I would say is if TSA says that they need to check your uh, bag, your camera bag manually and they don't want to use an x-ray or maybe they're going to do something a little different, they might take a swab out and swab your camera equipment or something. They're just looking for explosives and other drugs and chemicals like that. So don't be freaked out if they do that and just tell them that it's very expensive equipment and that they need to be careful with it and just answer yes and no questions if they ask any qu anything about it. And I guarantee you they'll treat it with respect and they, uh, they're they going to be walking on eggshells because they're going to not want to be uh, you know caused for damaging thousands of dollars of camera equipment. Because everything's on security camera, so anything that they do to mess up is going to be caught, so you don't have to worry about that. So until next time, I wish you the best of luck, and uh, I'll see you out there.